All right, Pastor Megan, travel faithfully. Here I am, the Philip Melanchthon house, dressed up in Philip Melanchthon outfit uh, to get your attention because Philip was the teacher of the Lutheran Church. He was the one who got the ideas out and who uh, shared them with everyday folk and who made the Lutheran movement what it is. And heck, if it takes a silly outfit to get you to care what I'm talking about, we'll do it. Melanchthon, uh, who lived in this house, wrote over 9,000 letters and over 2,000 books, um, which included speeches and remember books could be really tiny back then. Um, and Martin Luther even said he preferred Melanchthon's books to his own. And it, it, a huge portion of, of what he ended up writing were because he was a professor at the university were like recommendation letters for students and things like that. And that kind of shows that his space in the Reformation was as a mentor. Right, so it wasn't about all the credit or all the gravitas, it was about educating and passing on the legacy, right? And this is something that Lutherans throughout the United States have continued to do. There's a lot of spaces that have Lutheran schools and childcare centers, and the reason that we consider this an important thing to do is in part because educating children was something that, that Luther was very interested in, and he started some uh, schools and education centers for children that unfortunately didn't start happening until after he had died. But because teaching, and when, you're, when your denomination is created by a teacher, you think about things a little bit differently than if your denomination is created just by a pastor who wants you to only go to church and not go to school as well. And so uh, Melanchthon, pretty neat guy, had kind of a cool beard. If you find yourself here at the Philip Melanchthon house, you can see what his children looked like. And you can see what Melanchthon looked like and how he hung out with his wife um, and some of the things in his home. I recommend it. It's just down the street from Luther's house. You get a two for one deal if you buy your tickets the right way, which I did not. Melanchthon was also a lover of history and geography and he believed that food was medicine in part because he like uh, Anderson Cooper didn't find much joy in eating, but he thought it was a part of a, a diet and like medicine for your body. So he ate fish instead of lots and lots of meat like uh, other people during the day. He also was a keeper of historical collections of like small towns. This is a letter that was put in the steeple of the small called church of the, the town history. So he was very interested in all kinds of history, not just uh, church history. He was kind of a scholar through and through, although he was a bit wrong about Copernicus. Copernicus was right. Traveling around the sun. The earth travels around the sun. But you don't know what you don't know until later, right? So uh, hopefully this made you think a little bit more about how the Lutheran church got out there. Of course, you have one person with gravitas, Martin Luther, but if no one ever learns about it, if no one is taught how um, to be reformers or why, if no one keeps the history of small towns alive when things are getting destroyed, then the movement wouldn't have been as great as it was. So let that encourage you to find your peace in faith, your peace in Lutheranism. Do your part the best you can. Take care, everybody. One of the cool things that uh, Melanchthon is known for that not many people other than Lutheran pastors know about because it's in the Augsburg Confession, the like seven page, 700 page volume confessions of, of the Lutheran church is that the original like confession letter that was mailed off to the Pope, they didn't make a copy. <laughs> so Philip Melanchthon, having taken copious notes at the meeting, uh, rewrote it and put it out for publication. And then the Pope said, that's not what you wrote. And a second copy was then published and it was the copy that the group of Lutherans had put together as, as like a, a group. And uh, it was a little different than the stuff that just Melanchthon wanted done. And so then the now there are two copies 
of the confession. There's the one that got mailed off to the Pope that was a part of like negotiating, and then there's the Philip Melanchthon version, and it's a good time. They don't agree about lots of stuff. And uh, Lutheran pastors have to read about it in seminary and learn about the differences and maybe why those differences might be there. Uh, but it's just kind of cool that even in our founding confessional doctrines, we couldn't agree and still don't. <laughs>